one atmosphere is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Let's try to think what that means. Well, remember, what's a pascal? It's a newton per square meter. A pascal is a newton per square meter. Um, and have we seen this trick that when you have a, units in a ratio, it's a good trick to put the number one on the bottom to help you interpret it. So since we have a ratio of units here, let's put the number one on the bottom. So what does it mean that our pressure is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared? Well, remember, that's the normal atmospheric pressure. So what that means is, suppose that I drew a one square meter box on the floor. Suppose I drew a one square meter box on the floor. Well, that would feel a force from all the atmosphere on top of it. That would feel some force from all the atmosphere. Basically, it would feel the force of the weight of the atmosphere on top of it. There's uh, miles and miles of atmosphere above us right here. Um, so you feel the, the weight of that. Well, how much weight would that one square meter of floor feel? It would feel this much weight, 1.01 times 10 to the fifth newtons. Remember that newtons are also a measure for weight because weight is a force. So that's how we interpret the pressure. The pressure tells you how much force a one square, uh, a one square meter area would feel. Uh, so if we drew one square meter, it would feel uh, a force from the atmosphere of 1.01 times 10 to the fifth uh, newtons. So suppose that I drew a two square meter uh, square. How much force would that feel? Now, if you think about it, shouldn't it feel more force, not less force, right? It's going to have more atmosphere on top of it. Right? Um, if, I, if I drew two square meters, it would have twice as much atmosphere on top of it. So it would feel 2.02 times 10 to the fifth newtons. Basically, I just multiplied the top and the bottom of this fraction by two. We know we can multiply the top by two and the bottom by two and not change it. So uh, a pressure of uh, 1.01 times 10 to the fifth newtons per one meter squared is the same as a pressure uh, as a force of 2.02 times 10 to the fifth newtons over two square meters. So the point here is this is why we need to use the idea of pressure. We can't just say what the force is because the force depends on how big an area you're looking at. Um, so the bigger the area, the bigger the force is going to be. So it's convenient to use this concept of pressure that's the same everywhere. The pressure here is this constant 1.01 times 10 to the fifth newtons for every square meter. And then the total force will just depend on how many square meters we're looking at. So what we're seeing here is that the pressure and force are different things. But if you, know the, if you know the force, that's helpful for finding the pressure. Or if you know the pressure, that's helpful for finding the force. The pressure basically tells you what the force would be over one square meter. But it's actually very easy then to use that to figure out what the force would be over two square meters or three square meters. In fact, let's do that. Let's say that I've got four square meters of area. Let's figure out what the force of the atmosphere would be on that. What, what calculations would we have to do there? Now, your first steps were good. Okay. Let's uh, take a look at uh, that. So basically, you're trying to use the formula here. So that sounds like a good plan. We're using the formula. But we're trying to solve for force. So you solve this equation for force. Um, so what does the 1.01 times 10 to the fifth represent? That's not the force. Uh, as I think you're seeing now, that's the pressure. So we need to plug that into the pressure. 1.01 times 10 to the fifth. Let's actually plug in the units. Newtons per square meter. So we'll plug in these units, newtons per square meter. And then what area should we plug in? Um, four. four square meters. Good. So what calculation do we have to do? Um, multiply four by the. Right. Um, and by the way, what's going to happen to the units here? They're going to cancel. And we'll be left with. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I think we can do this calculation in our head. This would be 4.04 .04 times 10 to the fifth. Okay. All right. 
so that was a, actually a very important uh, series of manipulations that we did that you pretty likely have to do on the test. It would be too easy on the test if they just tell you the force and the area and ask you for the pressure. Instead, they're likely to give you, say, again, the area and the pressure and ask you for the force. Then you have to do a little bit more work to squeeze out that answer there. Again, a lot of people don't get that right because they forget that force and pressure are different things. But the force and the pressure are definitely different things. Um, so we had to do a little algebra here. Now, um, you can see that the units work out nicely here. Uh, eventually, it would be nice if we didn't even need the formula. Remember that this pressure tells us that one square meter would feel a force of 1.01 times 10 to the fifth newtons. So four square meters should feel four, four times as much force. OK, it's definitely a good idea to use the formula as a backup. But it's also good if we, have, if we understand the intuition behind this number. Um, four square meters should feel more force, not less force, because it has more air on top of it. The, uh, so the basic idea here is the bigger the area, the bigger the force it's going to feel, because it's feeling the force from all that atmosphere that's piled on top of it. So it's also good to see the basic intuition here. All we were saying is, remember it helps to put the number one on the bottom of the fraction. All this pressure meant is that one square meter would feel 1.01 times 10 to the fifth newtons of force from the atmosphere. Well, if we have four times as much area, it's going to be four times as much atmosphere and four times as much force. This is basically the total weight of the atmosphere on top of a four square meter area. All right, anyway, this is common. Uh, if you're given the pressure uh, you should, and the area, you should be able to find the force. Another important concept for us is going to be volume. Uh, a good symbol for volume would be capital V. And what would be the standard SI units for volume? Meters cubed. Okay, good. Uh, we know that most people would uh, say liters, uh, but we talked about this earlier. Even though liters are a common unit, they're not the standard SI unit in physics. If distance is in meters and area is in square meters, uh, volume should be in cubic meters. So even though chemistry usually uses liters, here the standard unit is cubic meters. You might still sometimes use liters, but this is the standard SI unit. Now, in terms of our analogy, what does the volume refer to? If I say that the volume is 5 cubic meters, whose volume is that? That's the cardboard box. Remember that in our analogy, we were imagining ping pong balls flying around inside a cardboard box. We said the pressure was from the impacts of the ping pong balls on the sides of the box. Well, if we say that V is 5 cubic meters, that means that the ping pong box has a volume of 5 cubic meters. So this is the volume of the container. We should think of this as the volume of the container. In our analogy, it's the box. I guess, I don't know why I keep stressing that it's made out of cardboard. That doesn't really matter. But anyway, the container here uh, is the V. Now, let's think about this analogy. Let's say that we decrease the size of the box. Would we expect that to increase or decrease the pressure? Increase the pressure. That sounds right. Uh, why, why would that be in terms of our analogy? How would that increase the pressure? Um, decreasing the volume of the box um, uh, decreases the area in which the molecules can rapidly hit the sides. So that means that they're hitting the sides of the box more frequently. So that was the key right there. Yeah, that was the key right there. If there's less space, there's going to be more collisions with the sides of the box. If there's less space, there's going to be more collisions with the sides of the box. So that analysis is exactly right. If there's less space, they're going to hit this, more collisions with the sides of the box. And we know that's where the pressure comes from. 
Okay, so we should see that there's a, would we call this an inverse relationship or a direct relationship? Inverse. Yeah, there's an inverse relationship here between P and V. Uh, also, suppose again we put a doll inside the box. Would it feel more pressure here? Well, yes, because the doll feels the pressure when the ping pong balls hit the doll. Well, again, if there's less space inside the box, then the ping pong balls are going to collide with the doll more often. So it, no matter whether you're thinking about the container or an object inside the box, a smaller volume means more pressure. 